Hey guys, what's up? Lifted Plane here. Today I'm going to be reviewing Children of Morta, released on September 3rd, 2019 by Dead Mage. This game is amazing, I cannot wait to tell you about it. The ancient tree had been cut down. Together, father and daughter described the horror, the creatures dripping with decay that slithered into bodies stuck between life and death to bolster their ranks. Grandma Margaret confirmed what they all feared. It was the corruption, a cruel entity spoken of only with hushed voices, an ocean of darkness that flowed from the top of Mount Morta. And the Bergson's duty was to stand against this devouring deluge of death. This is easily one of the best games of its types I've played in a long time. A hack and slash RPG roguelite with an incredibly thought provoking story that focuses on family and the bonds that hold them together instead of good and evil. Alright, so a little about the game. At launch, there were six playable characters John the Warrior, Linda the Archer, Kevin the Assassin, Mark the Monk, Lucy the Pyromancer, and Joey the Brawler. On June 24th, 2020, a seventh playable character, Upon the Clan Mother, was released as promised by the developers. Upon, created by one of the original backers, is a well-rounded mid-range support character who excels at co-op but can handle herself in solo combat just fine. Like any roguelike game, be prepared to die a lot. I guess you just have to be prepared to die. First we're going to talk about gameplay. This is a top-down 2D dungeon crawler with ranged and melee characters. You explore a procedurally generated dungeon on each visit and must find your way through to the boss. There are random upgrades, special puzzle rooms, and story encounters sprinkled throughout the dungeon to not only increase your character's abilities, but also enhance your exploration and make the dungeons more dangerous. Each character levels independently, which does require a bit more playing to really level them up. Thankfully, after you've unlocked some of the later worlds, experience can come much faster. Personally, I used Linda nearly the entire game and simply drop the other characters into the in-game levels to get quick upgrades and experience. As characters level up, they unlock buffs at level 4, 8, 14, and 20. These buffs are for all characters and assist in making the game easier. You'll also unlock various NPCs to help you along the way, like the shopkeeper or the astronomer, so thankfully it's not just grinding for the sake of the grind. On to music, which is honestly one of the best parts of this game. And the background music for this video. It's mostly instrumental, it manages to evoke the proper emotions, from melancholic melodies to pumped up electronic. The music is definitely one of the highlights for me. If the developers would release a soundtrack, I'd definitely buy it. Visuals, it's a pixel art 2D top-down RPG that looks absolutely amazing. I did notice a few odd layer settings with the characters and their ranged attacks, but it wasn't game break in the slightest and I only noticed these things when I started looking for them. What surprised me the most is how tiny little pixel faces can convey so much emotion. I attribute most of this to the wonderful narration provided by Ed Kelly. The user interface is crisp, clean, well laid out, with everything you need to see easily accessible. The menus are labeled well, I didn't see any misspellings, and there was nothing that just didn't work. One note, if you plan on playing with a controller, make sure the controller is either plugged in or turned on before you start the game, because if it's not, you will have to restart the game after you've turned the controller on, that way the game can go ahead and know that it's there. A little frustrating, lots of games are like that. There's fixes that can be enabled to allow these games to pick them up, but even AAA developers miss this, so honestly it's not that big of a deal, just make sure you're already holding your controller with it on when you're ready to play. Difficulty. Uh, a hard mode playthrough took me about 30 hours total from start to final boss fight. 
I still had quite a few things to unlock. It starts out very difficult. That does get easily mitigated by buying upgrades and leveling your characters up. All skills have a cap. There is a new game plus mode that unlocks after the first time you complete the game, which raises these skill caps. Personally, I'd recommend grinding everything to max then going into new game plus as the difficulty increases quite a bit. There is some pretty hefty difficulty hikes between different areas like world 1 and world 2. It's uh, generally priced at $14.99 and less on sale, and personally I think this game is worth every penny. The fact that it offers local multiplayer and the recently added remote play together through Steam, you can play solo or with friends, and while this game might have released in 2019, the developers still have more content updates and one single paid content update coming. Well guys, that's it. This game is 100% worth the money. I definitely recommend that you buy it. It's amazing. If you can catch it on sale, obviously try to catch it on sale. Otherwise, it's definitely worth $14.99. If you've made it this far in the video, be sure to smash that like button, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and catch me on Twitch sometime. Thanks for being here and have a great night.